everyone, Pushing Up Roses here. You know what? I've decided to walk a different path in my life. It's time to set aside my passions for the creative and artsy lifestyles. I want to be a doctor, specifically a surgeon. And what better way to learn a new skill than by playing a video game? Life and Death. <sighs> the title says it all. It's deep. This is a life simulation game developed by Jake Smith and Don Labs and published by the software Toolworks. Hello, nurse! As in, hi, how's it going? You're a nurse and I'm saying hello to you. All you have to do to become a doctor is sign this clipboard. Mmm, lovely. There's some very respectable names here, like Jerkoff. Not sure I trust him with his measly 8 out of 20 successful diagnoses. Actually, nobody here has great success. Abraham, who signed his name in all caps, which displays an obvious self-righteous tone, has only had 9 out of 42 successful medical cases. This hospital has to be swarming with lawsuits and cadavers. Time to push on people's stomachs. In this game, you're an abdomen doctor. You can diagnose things like kidney stones, arthritis, and even intestinal gas. You're presented with a patient who has a chart that tells you his or her symptoms, and then it's up to you to follow proper protocol during your examination. Though, check out this guy's arms. I think he has more issues than just ghastly constipation. Ghastly. Ghastly. Huh. His arms look like small tree trunks with a mangled blob hand attached to them. Maybe this is the guy from Children of the Corn. You know, the guy who got his hand mangled in that cooking machine thing? Do you remember that? This man is clearly a victim of the Children of the Corn and I will help him by diagnosing him with flatulence and sending him off with an astronomical medical bill. Trust me, those bills have to be high with the amount of malpractice that happens at this hospital. Before you can really dive into the exciting world of aneurysms and infected intestine, you have to go to orientation. The classroom is where you go to be shamed by the chief of surgery. When you do something wrong like misdiagnose a patient, violate surgical methods, or miss a phone call because you no longer have the manual for the game's copy protection, he'll set you on the right track with words of wisdom and knowledge. Let's just say I was in this classroom a lot, but hey, if this guy wants to keep hiring me after I keep making all these mistakes, that's his problem. There's a procedure for everything you do. Most of the time, you first want to read the patient's chart, then perform an abdomen exam in which you poke and prod all over their stomach. Depending on what you find, you'll have to approve one of these options. Generally, if the patient is yiping in pain, you want to do an x-ray, and if the patient has a lump, you want to do an ultra scan. If you order unnecessary scans or x-rays, the chief will yell at you for wasting time and money. Hmm, let's take a look at the chart here. Uh-huh. I see. I like what you did there. Ah. I'll just give you a bit of an x-ray here. Hmm, interesting. I see. Well, you're sick, so I'm going to medicate you. Crap, there goes another one. Diagnosing simple maladies like stomach flu or kidney stones is pretty simple and definitely can be learned through some trial and error and by reading what the doc has to say in class. Surgery, however, is not as straightforward. To actually beat this game, you have to correctly diagnose and follow the procedures for two surgeries, removing the appendix and correcting a mature aortic aneurysm. Let's see here, this can't be too bad. Let me just prep the patient, we'll make a little incision and... Oh my god, oh my god! I forgot to put him under. Oh my god, I sliced and diced a patient! I'm going to be fired and sued and... Oh, never mind, Doc says he has hope in me and he gave me another patient. Alright, what are you in for? Surgery is extremely involved, and you might be able to pick up a few things via trial and error over time, but I found it almost impossible without the manual and paperwork the game comes with. The doctors you work with sometimes give you a few pointers, but for the most part, they're just robots who repeat what you're doing back to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for telling me I put on my gloves. I hadn't even noticed. Kim just gets all sassy with me. Your patient has shuffled off this mortal coil. That's doctor slang for you done killed your patient. I had actually learned later in my playthrough that you can choose your surgery staff by going into the staff room. Certain people can help you more than others. Even when I knew exactly how to do something, it was still extremely hard because you have to be so precise. There is no room for error here. You probably don't want to leave forceps in the patient's stomach or allow them to die of cardiac arrest, and you definitely don't want to cut their colon open and infect it by mistake. There are so many steps, and in between doing these steps as perfectly as possible, the patient's blood pressure can start to go haywire or their heart can start beating irregularly, and you'll have to know how to remedy that so you can keep going. And all of these instruments are intimidating. I don't know what any of these things do. And what the hell is this thing? I don't think I used it once in the entire game. 
After killing a lot of people, I eventually got the hang of it and finished a few appendix surgeries. Hey, you cannot learn without making a few mistakes, right? You cannot make an omelet without breaking some eggs. Every cook will tell you that. The second surgery is performing a graft for a patient with an aortic aneurysm. This one has elements of the previous surgery combined with even more tedium. The attention to detail is so crazy in this game. I don't know whether I want to praise it or set it on fire. I felt on edge the entire time, even when I was at the end stitching the patient back up. I found myself getting really frustrated when I would get through the entire surgery thinking I did it correctly, only to have forgotten something extremely simple in the beginning that I didn't even find out about until the whole thing was done. You get so annoyed you just want to create artwork on the patient's body with surgery staples and stick clamps and forceps all over their stomachs. After about 35 casualties, I did complete the second surgery, and when you do that you get a certificate that says you graduated or some shit. Life and Death is a pretty tough game, but it's not bad by any stretch of the word. I'm not sure I'd describe it as a happy-go-lucky, fun time type of game where your heart is filled with joy and giggling, but it's very engrossing and it's also so fulfilling when you manage to complete the surgeries. I'm showing the DOS version for this review, and for CGA graphics, it doesn't look that bad, though the other versions of this game have more colors and look a bit nicer. Kind of seemed like the DOS version was an afterthought. The sound effects are simple yet effective, the continual beeping actually did make me feel like I was in surgery. It also made me feel slightly homicidal, which is probably why I have so many ex-patients. Though I think we need some kind of updated version, because with all the advancements in technology, I'm pretty sure most surgery is laparoscopic now. I want a game that teaches me how to poke holes and cameras into people's abdomens. The sequel to this game, Life and Death 2, The Brain, allows you to play the role of a neurosurgeon, which, my god, that has to be ten times more complicated. No thank you. So great, I got my certificate, I performed two digital surgeries, surely I can become a doctor now. I mean, check out this realistic simulation. I feel confident in my abilities and I'm ready to elevate the cecum and invert the stump and all that shit. Wait a second, what? This isn't training me to become a doctor? Well, shit. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my review on life and death. I'm not exaggerating, without the manual to help me, I killed so many people. You gotta have that manual. I'd like to think they were all mercy killings. Anyone with stumps for arms can't be a happy camper. If you want to see another review by moi, I linked one for Spy Fox in Dry Serial. And if you want to see another DOS game, check out my friend Lazy Game Reviews video on Doom. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.